Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, I'm going to give you guys my match reaction to RJ1, Ecuador 1, RJ win 4-2 on penalties. So my quick take on my quick takeaways from this game is that RJ and Tina were very average in the day. They were very average. They were very underwhelming. And I actually think Ecuador played a very good game. I think Ecuador actually put up a game that they can feel proud of. And they put up a game against the defending Copa America champions. So let's do a quick run through of the game. And then I'll give you guys my takeaways from both teams. And then we're going to round off. So when you look at the lineups for both teams, what was interesting to me was the fact that Lionel Scaloni finally decided to give Lataro a go. You know, he's been he's he's pretty much been against Lataro for a while now. And now he's given Lataro the start and we see what he can do. As for Ecuador, they put out the best 11 possible, although I think the formation was a bit odd to some degree because it went it was a bit too defensive when I first saw it. But as the game got on, you, you saw that it wasn't as defensive. You know, you, you saw. And the first 20 minutes or so, I would say, Ecuador were the better team. Ecuador were creating chance. And that save that uh, Emmy Martinez made, I believe it was the 15th minute of the game, was a game-defining save. Game-defining save. And then Kendry Pires almost scored right after RGO were looking very underwhelming that first 20 minutes. I thought Moises Caicedo was amazing. Guys, I told you guys how good Moises Caicedo is for Ecuador. In my opinion, he is the best Ecuadorian player on this team. When you look at the other players of this team, he is the by far the best. He is the most dynamic, most important, most significant. He is the crucial part for this team. And for RG10, man, they were looking very uh, underwhelming. And then they got the goal there from Lozano Martinez. Good goal there. You know, I think Messi got the corner there, and then I think Alexis McAllister gave the assist. So, Lozano Martinez, poor defending there from Ecuador. Really, really bad defending there from Ecuador. That was terrible defending there. Nobody man-marking Lissandra there at the near post. And Lissandra is given um, acres of space to score the header. Dominguez tries to clear off the line, but it wasn't to be. And it's 1-0 Argentina. And at that point, I'm like, yeah, oh, man, the floodgates have already opened, right? But credit to Ecuador. They resisted, they fought, and then in the second half, they get awarded a penalty, which, in my opinion, is not a penalty. It hit, I think it was Rodrigo de Paul's arm. It hit this part of the hand. And for me, I just don't understand how is that a penalty because it didn't hit any part of his hand. It literally hit the shoulder part. Luckily, um, VAR, uh, luckily the penalty was missed, so I guess it redeems. I guess it makes up for it. Um, Enter Valencia hit the post there. And I don't understand why Enter Valencia uh, took the penalty because I understand he's the most experienced player in the team. I understand he's the captain and everything. But you can tell that Kendry Pius really wanted that penalty. And I can assure you that if Kendry Pius had, he probably would have scored the penalty. Because Enter Valencia, when it comes to crucial moments in the game, when it comes to cl when it comes to uh, defining moments, the guy always misses under pressure. The guy isn't good under pressure. The guy is terrible under pressure. And he's been notorious for doing this. For several years now. Anyways, Argentina struggled with the game in the second half. Ecuador really started growing into the game, marking substitutions. You know, Felix Sanchez made some substitutions. Brian Kevin Rodriguez, 76, and John Yoba. And these two subs actually combined to get the equalizer there at the last minute of the game. You know, and it was a good goal. Great, great though goal from Kevin Rodriguez. Great header. And it's 1-1. One, one. Goes to penalties because remember, guys, there's no game that goes to extra time. And I think that really hurt Ecuador's chances of winning because I knew when it came down to pens, Emmy Martinez was going to come clutch. Emmy Martinez was going to come clutch, and he did. And even though Messi missed his penalty, he tried to do a Panenka there. Uh, Messi missed his penalty, and Emmy Martinez comes up clutch, making two big saves on Ecuador, and Ecuador bow out on penalties. I think Ecuador can feel proud. So that that's pretty much the game summary. Let me talk about. Let's talk about Ecuador first. Let's let's give some positives first. I think Ecuador be, can can be proud. That they played a great game against the defending Copa America champions. Guys, this is the defending reigning Copa America champions. And to do this is commendable. They were fantastic in this game. I honestly think they were the better team. And Ecuador really played well throughout the course of the game. They had nine shots, two took on, sorry, two big chances. Ecuador were by far the better team. The only issue for Ecuador was that goal they conceded. If they hadn't conceded that goal from that position, from that set piece, they could have maybe won this game. They could have maybe won this game. And I think Ecuador, for me, defensively looked very solid. I thought Pachko, that center back, is fantastic. He had a monster game. And I believe um, it was amazing this game. Amazing this game. I thought Caicedo was amazing. These two players. 
for Ecuador, man, just that one goal they conceded, man. They one goal they conceded. Just poor defensively, man. And yeah, I just think for Ecuador, man, very good for them. The only thing that really worries me for Ecuador is that attack. That attack is what really worries me because Enter Valencia, I'm sorry, the guy is retired. The guy is, I think, like 33 years old. Yeah, 34 years old. I think it's time for him to call it quits. I don't even think he's good enough for them in the World Cup and he only had one shot, guys. Enter Valencia has been cursed to Club America. He hasn't scored a goal since 2019, guys. 2019 Copa America is the last time he scored in the Copa America. Um, sorry, Mento. Very disappointing for my country. Pai has just not really been clicking, although he is a teenager, so I'm not going to be too critical. And yeah, I think for Ecuador, as I said, man, they just need more options for goals. That's pretty much the only criticism I have. And for Argentina, man, I have a lot of issues with Argentina. I thought Argentina, for me, in this game were very average, very underwhelming. They were missing places, so many passes. I thought Enzo Fernandez was particularly really bad. I thought he was very ineffective. He was terrible. Uh, probably one of the worst RG players on the pitch. Um, I thought Nico Gonzalez was pretty underwhelming as well. I thought he had a mad game. Um, I thought DePaul was okay. I thought DePaul was okay. I thought the defense was okay as well. But I think for Argentina, man, Messi, man. See, the thing with Messi is that even Messi at not his best is still very dangerous. He is still a very threatening player because, sure, he may not give you those goal-scoring chances. He may not get those opportunities. But the guy can still provide the vision. He still has the intelligence to make those kind of beautiful passes. He is so smart. He can make those beautiful passes. He is so influential in terms of playmaking. So even if Messi, though, even though for Messi, he wasn't particularly great for his standards, he still um, didn't really offer that much goal scoring aspect. And I think you can start to see that Messi is kind of not having the same motivation. And obviously, I think the injuries have plagued him this season for the Copa America because he's been injury. He's been injured a lot this season. And obviously, I think the motivation is just not as there because, you know, he's already won a couple. He's won an World Cup. This is kind of like a bonus for him now at this point. And so for Messi, as I said, man, let's see if he can continue his form. And then Emmy Martinez, man. Emmy Martinez is critical to Argentina, guys. I'm going to go ahead here and record and say this right now, guys. I don't think there's a single nation in the Copa America that can beat Argentina on pens. If you want to beat Argentina, you cannot beat them on pens. You're going to have to beat them in 90 minutes because Emmy Martinez is just that guy, man. He is just that difference maker. He's so clutch, he can make those saves for you, especially in penalties. He's so influential and everything. And for Argentina, man, I think Lozano Martinez had another fantastic game in the back. I think him and Romero was fantastic of the day. And I think Lozano Martinez, you see how much value he brings defensively to the team. And I think, honestly, he's he's displaced um, Otamendi. I think he's displaced Otamendi. And, and you could kind of tell that Otamendi was kind of fault for the goal that I think they conceded, if I believe, at the end. So... For Alessandro Martinez, man, great goal for him, great moment for him. And I think for Argentina, they have to figure out who's going to be the striker up top. Is it going to be Lautaro or is it going to be Julian Alvarez? I feel like Julian Alvarez is just better for Argentina because I feel like he's he has um, he works more for the team. I feel like Lautaro is better as a super sub. I think Lautaro is better as a super sub, and I think Leonardo Scaloni will probably agree with that. And for Argentina, man, you got to start Palacios. I'm sorry, Enzo Fernandez cannot start for Argentina in the game, in the next game against either Canada or Venezuela. I've already just said, man, they have to work up some issues. I'll work up because I feel like this team is still a very good team. I still think the team is great, and I still think the team can be at their best. It's just that this team needs an up a notch. If they can up a notch, then I think it can be very difficult to beat. I Because they're kind of giving me France vibes where they're just getting by, but they haven't really convincing yet yet. But I think as the tournament goes on, RG will grow into the tournament. They'll get better in the tournament, better and better. And I think you'll see the best version of RG Cheetah in the latter stages, in the semis, or in the final. So yeah, man, that's pretty much my takeaways from RJ. Pretty much my takeaways there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, guys. Let me know if there's any major talking points in the comments below. I'm sure there probably is. And yeah, like I said, guys, congrats to RG to make it the semifinals. And for Ecuador, as I said, man, their poor record in the stage continue, guys. Because like I said, guys, Ecuador still haven't reached a quarter of a semifinals of the uh, Copa America since 1993. Very disappointing for them. And for RG man, props to them, man. So hope you guys did enjoy. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.